the split tool, select the fill, and then select our cutting element, which is the project three. And it'll turn this kind of gray color showing the elements that you want to remove. If you do the other side, it will remove everything else except for this little portion right here. So that kind of helps you guys get a little bit of uh, help on surface modeling. So we'll just, we want to remove this portion here. So we press OK, and now that's gone. Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, so now uh, the, the last step here, well, second to last step, is it says it wants you to thicken it. Now there's a thicken tool inside of part modeling. So I'll actually go back to start, go to mechanical design, and go back to part design. And inside of the, I think it's the surface toolbar. Let me double check, make sure. Let's see, yeah, surface based features. Yep, that's the one. Turn surface based features on. There is a thickened, thick surface. So if you click that and select the, the surface, you can tell it how thick you want it to be. So we can make it like 10 millimeters. And if we press OK, it will take that surface and thicken it into a solid body, which you can now use to manipulate, uh, you know, punch holes in it or, you know, attach it in assembly or anything like that. So that's how you thicken the tool. Uh, again, it's just a thickened surface. This button also exists inside of generative shape design. I just couldn't find it before class. So that's one way to do it. If you want to actually take the time and go back, um, it's probably on a similar named toolbar. I'm not sure. Maybe it's uh, surface machining tools or something. But anyway, it does exist in here as well. But I just found it in the, in the part design. So that's where I went to. Okay, the last step to fixing this, uh, this up is it says you need to add some robust parametrics. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to go in and grab each sketch and you'll need to constrain it using those formulas so that this thing can increase in width or height or length. And so you'll need to make sure that each portion of that's constrained. So we have to put the formulas and the constraints on each point of the spline. So if you create the formula once, then you'd, be, you'd have to constrain your model normally anyway. So when you constrain it, you'll constrain it to the formula rather than just typing in a hard number. Yeah, so for the spline, you'd need to find some way of controlling all of the control points. There's a way that uh, it'll allow you to do it automatically. Like it'll, it'll constrain every point relative to some object. But as of yet, I have not figured out how to make it so that you can put a formula in for those values. Right now, it just puts a, a hard number in. So if I can figure that out, I'll definitely show it to you guys, send out like an email. But for right now, I would just constrain each point individually and then just add that formula for, for those so that they update. Okay, so you'll, you'll do that. You'll apply your constraints to your sketches. Make sure you use formulas so that this thing can update. And then for the homework, or excuse me, for the in-class submissions, you guys will have two images of each one of these surfaces. You'll have one that's similar to the one that's, that's drawn. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. I mean, figuring out that spline in uh, four different directions could be a little tricky. Um, but uh, go ahead and create each one of these surfaces. You'll go ahead and then expand it using those formulas to make them twice as big or, or whatever you want to do. And so you'll have six different images, uh, two for each one of those. For the homework, you're going to apply the same techniques we did, and you're going to create a part for your vehicle using surfaces, and then you can thicken it or, or uh, sew it together. Um, I'll, be, before we're done, I'll, I'll show you guys how to sew surfaces together and turn it into a solid. Um, but anyway, you'll need to have uh, one team member for, or each team member submit one component of your car using surfaces, and you'll just show some screenshots of that. Uh, but that does need to be parametric as well. So you'll have two images that you'll share. 
Uh, make sure on those assignments you guys include your names um, for those students in China and NTU and, and the other places. If you're not using the Roman alphabet, if you could please put your name in the Roman alphabet so that way we can know what your name is and get you that grade, that would be very helpful to us. Um, so I'll show you guys real quick how to just sew surfaces together to turn it into a solid, and then I'll just kind of give you guys the rest of the time to kind of work on this. Um, hopefully this shouldn't be too bad for you. So I'm going to start a new part again. Uh, Sorry, Josh, the parameters that we do? Yeah. We're just setting our own parameters, right? Yeah, like you can set up your own parameters. So like for the doubly curved surface, you probably only need two. Yeah. One to control the length, one to control the width. For the funnel chimney type thing, I think they made some recommendations. Um, control like the height, the width, the depth, the, the diameter. Um, and then for this last one, I mean, you basically just need like the length, the height, and the width. You're, you're good. Uh, okay, so real quick, if you're creating some complex shape um, and you're doing it using surfaces, so I'm just going to create like something. Go ahead and put a fill on that. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, put some lines in here. Actually, here, let's do this. Let's create a sketch on this plane, and we'll draw a line. And then if I draw a line from here to here, and from here to here, and here to here, and here to here, and throw some fills in. Oh, not closed geometry. There is a gap. Wow, that is a really small gap. Let's see here. Hang on one sec. So if I do a fill now, I should be able to grab this, this, and that. There we go. So if you guys were curious on how to make a pyramid before, this is one way you could do it. I noticed that some of your parts have pyramids on them. It looks like we'll need to extract the geometry on that one as well. Come on. Here we go. And another fill right here, here. Okay, there's one, and we'll get this last one. There we go. Okay, so this is completely hollow on the interior. This is just built using just using surfaces. Um, there is a way to get this to basically turn into a solid if you want it to. Um, what you do is you use this join tool. And it allows you to join different elements. So that one and that one I can join together. And that is now considered to be one surface. Similarly, I can join this one and this one. And this one. And the one on the bottom. 
And so now that that has all been joined together, I can turn that into a solid. Um, let me see if I can find the tool. It is, nope, let's see here. It might be in here. Yeah, there it is. Closed surface. Okay, so after I've joined everything, I can click closed surface, select this, press OK, and now that should be a solid. Now if I hide my surfaces, oops. Yep, there we go. So my surfaces were still there, and that's why it still showed up as yellow. So I hit my surfaces, and now you can tell that there's an actual solid object there. Okay? Using this technique is awesome because you can create some really complex geometry. You can sew it together and then create a, an actual solid body out of it. For this assignment, you're not expected to do that, but I just wanted to show this for your vehicles. If there's something that's really, really tough that you're not sure how to make, you can try making it with surfaces first. So it, or join it all together and then close the surface. Now, this technique is a little bit difficult. Uh, anything that gives you, more the, uh, gives you more ability to control an object is always inherently more difficult. Some of the er errors that might pop up while you're doing this type of thing, uh, it might say it's unable to close the surface or it's unable to join the surface. The reason that that happens is just like in a sketch, a surface cannot have any gaps in between two surfaces. So inside of a sketch, if I draw something like this, and I have a gap like this, I can't do anything with that. I can't, I can't pat it out, I can't revolve it, I can't do a multi-section solid on it. Um, because there's a gap there. And so similarly, if you have two sheet bodies with a gap, you cannot sew them together, you cannot turn them into a solid body. Okay. Similarly, you can still have something that looks like this. Let's see if I can grab it. And have a gap like that. It's not closed. And so sometimes you could have a sheet that overlaps at an intersection like that. You could have a sheet that's going in this direction and a sheet going in that direction. When you try to join those together, it might throw an error. When you try to close those, it won't work because it's not closed. So you need to make sure edges are meeting up with edges, points are meeting up with points. And sometimes the most frustrating part about surface modeling, you might have another sheet on top of that. So this right here, could have two, two, uh, two lines on it. You could have two sheets that are on the same plane, same direction, and one of those sheets, sheets is just floating in space. And you might not see it. So if you're trying to join this thing together, it's throwing you an error. Chant that it's gotta be one of those three problems. There's either a hole or a gap in there, or they're crisscrossing, or there's just loose geometry in there that's just floating around that you can't see. So if that's the case, to troubleshoot that, usually you can just hover over the object and see what highlights and see if it's highlighting a sheet body or if it's highlighting everything. And that will generally give you an indication if there's extra geometry there. So those are my kind of my, my tips for figuring out how to overcome that, uh, that type of error. Um, I think that's all we had for lab today. So I will give you guys the rest of the time to work on these problems. Um, just a reminder to you, um, next week we are having design reviews and those will happen every single week. So make sure that you have a PowerPoint ready showing the progress of your teams. Uh, if you have teams at another university, get together this week during your meeting, maybe do some of those slides. Um, we're doing, we need to do a PowerPoint every week. Uh, so what I would do is I would just take the current PowerPoint that you create this week, present it next week, hide some of those slides and add slides to it so that you can show what work you've done the previous week, what you're planning on doing this week, and what you have planned for the following week, right?
And then uh, this will, Dr. J is going to be in lab, and he'll uh, he'll be watching these. Um, these PowerPoints, if you do this correctly, it will be your final project.